Yes, this is a quick after work chat. Let's see who wants to show up. Just going to give it a minute to see who is going to tune in here. Let's see who wants to show up. Give it a minute. Ah, here we go. Hello, St Stone Wolf Outdoors and Curtis Miller. Welcome. Just tuning in a little bit after work to see who wants to show up. I wasn't having too much of a pleasant afternoon, so I said, hey, why don't I see what my my buddies here at YouTube are doing? So, yeah, it's, everything I've been touching turns out to be a frustrating mess. I'm trying to fix the camera now, and it's very annoying. That's worse than before. There we go. Uh, good morning, Greg. Yes. Just tuned in right on time, I guess. Yeah, I came home from a busy day at work. It was really frustrating. Had a lot of stressful activity today. And I was going to really work on the bees. As you've probably seen in my last stream, I'm working on crafting my own uh, bee queens. And that's not working out for me too well. It's stressing me out a little bit. So I wanted to try something new today. So I get up here all day, perfect weather. I get everything started up and it starts to rain. Yeah, that wasn't so cool. So I had to put everything away. And then I worked on the uh, the rain gutter a little bit. I, I was able to stand under there and watch it uh, pour into there to see if it's tilted correctly. And I had to take one of the hangers off. I got that headache. And bring it inside and actually twist it so that I can mount it to the side of the of one of these um, roof posts here. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. So now the, I guess the rain gutter is set to catch all the rain now. I was a little worried about it not doing that. So we'll see how that goes when it starts to rain. Like I think tomorrow it's supposed to rain a lot. Yeah, so then um, working on the rain gutter for about an hour, and then the rain went away. So I opened up my bees, and uh, nothing was going as I had planned. So I had to try to come up with a new idea. And as I was doing that, I could not find my queen out of my favorite colony, and it was driving me nuts. Because I had to take brood frames out to make a bee split. And I really wanted to be careful where the queen was, and the bees were not too happy today. So that wasn't very much fun at all. Yeah, so what else did I do today? I was out hunting some jasper, walking through the, the red sand, the freshly freshly dug red sand. I found a couple nice rocks, but if it rains real hard for about an hour or two, that's when all the nice ones should show up. They're covered in sand now. And once they get a little bit wet, they washes off the dust and you can really just pick them out off the top of the soil. I could take a rake, you know, like a mining action with that, with the ax and a pick and sit out there all day and just pick away. But that's, um, nah, my other option was to go metal detect someone's backyard that uh, I had an invitation to go metal detecting in someone's backyard, which used to be a really cool uh, farming field in World War II, which will be probably worth going there. I might do that after work tomorrow. We'll see. KP Heathen, welcome. From Louisiana. That's good to hear. Yes, here in Germany, it's not... Um, Yeah, the weather is, I don't know, what's it like in Louisiana right now? I heard it's pretty hot in the United States right now.
Yeah, Greg, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I got up this morning at 4 o'clock and I had to come up here and do some things. I had to water the grapevines. I really didn't want to go to work. It was so nice. I, mean, I had to let Pooh Bear out for a little bit. Then I had to go to work. Find some breakfast on the way there. And work all today was really busy. Now lately I've been really slow, been lacking customers uh, quite uh, intensively. But today I had a lot of a lot of work to do, and tomorrow not so much because I did most of it today. So I have some more time to surf the internet tomorrow. <laughs> but I don't know. It's sometimes I feel like uh, I do this on purpose. You know, I force myself to to work real hard more than I would like. It's, uh, I guess, kind of like a therapy for myself so I don't get too involved in the things that distract you and bring you down in life. Getting lots of extreme rainy weather. Oh, wow. I've been hearing a lot of uh, heat waves that have been going through the United States. That's why I was wondering. I'm so tired. I almost fell asleep on the way home on the Autobahn. I was driving, and I was like... Rrr. Uh, yeah, I had to hurry up and get home. And I start working a little bit up here and then, yeah. Yeah, oh, you work at NASA. Yeah, I work I work uh, in a recycling business for the U.S. Air Force and their interests. That's about all I can tell you. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good job. Yeah, NASA is pretty cool. I guess you get to, since I'm really fascinated by uh, the James Webb telescope and all the stuff it's been discovering lately and all the distant places and interesting new pictures of things that we didn't know existed and possibly even alien life here in the next couple of days, months, and years. Um, yeah, it's so fascinating, space. And uh, also, have you heard of the... Chinese receiving radio signals from a distant galaxy and then uh, covering the whole thing up and deleting it. What do you guys think about that? I think that's kind of weird. I think that might be a false flag or I don't know. It's kind of odd. Uh, of course, I'm pretty sure if the Chinese. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's my shirt. You can't have it. It's very precious. Where is it? <clears throat> yeah, so the Chinese have discovered the, the aliens first, I guess. That's what they're trying to say. But uh, if there's alien signals, then I guess that they're not the only ones that are going to receive them. I just think that their satellite is kaput, and they, and they won't admit that they need a new one. Made in China. Oh, it's kaput. It's just not working. Uh, they need someone come and uh, find a contractor in Germany to build one for them. That'd be funny. Yes. All right. Who we got here? Seven viewers. That's a lot. Put like three the zeros behind it, and that will be awesome. <laughs> I'll be laughing at that next time this year when that's like a reality of things. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I've, uh, what else did I do today up here? I was going to fire up the forge for a little bit and actually go and get some furs and actually lay in my bed and sleep up here. It was raining really nice. And what's really cool about the forge, I can make a small fire in it, and it acts like a stove. It heats up this place like in five minutes, which is really cool. I don't know if I should do that often, but uh, I tried it out the other day, and it was pretty neat. Yeah, so I got a lot of uh, things on my mind today. What else? All the cherries are starting to ripen up here. We had some cherries this weekend. I had to put pick Vanessa up on my shoulders. We were picking the cherries, and they kept falling down. And Pooh Bear was trying to eat them off the ground, I was trying to kick them away because he's not supposed to eat the seeds. Uh, what do we got here? We've got uh, internet. Okay, 
Make sure the connection is good. Mm -hmm. Really excited. They discovered a new Viking ship in uh, Gelstad. Gelstad, I think that's how you pronounce it. And I'm waiting for them to release the, the uh, findings of what they found. They had an article in the uh on the internet the other day i was reading about that's pretty interesting what they were saying about how that ship got there and who it may have belonged to i think there's something crawling on my leg i was in the forest earlier with pooh bear it's a pine forest it's full of ticks oh, watch he had one on his eyelid the other day that was so hard to pick that one off and i think i broke i didn't get it all out Yes. Uh, so, what do you guys think? You think the Chinese the Chinese satellite discovered a Chinese discovered a, um, ET's planet? It's really cool because I was uh, kind of sitting back thinking about what if aliens came down now and yeah, that's it's just something that fascinates me. I don't think they should land in China. We have the most technologically advanced country in this uh, unit on this planet all our technology is crap because <laughs> we make so much of it so fast so cheaply that'd be funny i wonder if they if they hear this if they'll shut off the internet hmm Yeah, I'm not getting any response here. Something must be up with the internet. There we go. Yeah, they're uh, they're afraid that if we give up the information, there was a moth. If we give if we give people information, they'll uh, they'll know stuff. Oh, hi, Lung. A new song on YouTube. They put out a new song. Oh, wow. I have to check that out. That's one of my favorite uh, medieval bands. Where is it? Ah. Mushrooms go in the forest. <laughs> Ah, Sotunar, Sotunar, welcome. Yeah, it's a 50-50. Today's a real stressful day. That's why I thought I'd tune in with my, with all you awesome people here at the YouTube community and uh, see if we can uh, change, the, change the course of um, destiny in this live stream. Yeah, they will conquer the world. Soon, not only rule the entire world, but the entire universe. <laughs> but we got to start small. So we'll start here in this live stream. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will kick it off. And then one day I will rule the entire universe. Uh, then, you know, it's like one of those cartoon things. Yeah, we were just talking a little bit about the, uh, the internet and... Uh, no, it was the Chinese discovering, not the internet, the space signal. There's a signal from outer space that the Chinese satellites received. They thought they have discovered aliens. And, oh, all of a sudden, we just deleted all the internet posts and information on that. So don't worry about that. That's really funny. Yeah, in case anybody's wondering about this T-shirt. Yeah, I just happened to grab that. This is a really, really old T-shirt that I had. The reason I'm wearing it is because my unusual stack of laundry that I usually recycle down and wash and, and usually keeps growing back has depleted itself. Uh, and I am now wearing whatever's in the clean pile <laughs> because I'm too lazy to do the laundry. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Oh, Amano Martha's new album in August. That's pretty cool. I think the last one they released was something with the Jums Viking. That was a pretty good uh, album as well. Ah, uh, Luke and Mom, welcome. 
How's your Hobbit house coming along? I know you're working on that a lot lately all as well. <laughs> That's really cool. I, think, I don't know if it's like a thing that if you could play music on the live stream that YouTube will demonetize your video for copyright. I'm not quite sure about that because I don't understand how they do the shorts, the YouTube shorts. You can add music right into the video there from YouTube. So it's really strange how that works. Are oh, you making sandbags? Okay. Got this welt on my face now. It's from Pooh Bear jumping up with his claws. And I don't know what he got, but he dug one of his claws into my cheek. And now it's it's bleeding nonstop. Like every day I'm like, what's this? And then I peel it off and it's like blood everywhere. It's brutal. Just make a heavy, like a death metal song. Like a death clock song. Could wear this goofy looking thing right here. Mm. I can't even see what I look like with that on. I look like the dude from Star Trek or from the, the X-Men. Yeah, that'd be weird. It's pretty goofy. Whoa. The camera lights uh, look like alien eyeballs. I got this for for you for the uh, B. I got this for the bees when I do the when I put this on. I can't see out of this worth you know this this wasn't worth the twenty bucks that I bought. So you go in there real close, and you have a tool. Um, I don't know. I use this old school. It's like a feather, and you go in there and you scoop up the little bee larva and then you put it in one of these cups right here and you hang it in the colony and the bees will recognize this as a queen cell they'll think it's a queen cell and they'll draft it out to a queen cell and then uh let me take this off this is annoying after they do that you wait till they cap it off and when they cap the bee when they cap off the cell you put one of these doohickeys over here Put one of these. Do I have a separate one? Yeah. And you open this top end here and you slide that over so the queen hatches inside here and is safely separated from all the other queens that would hatch at the same time uh, to protect her from being stung by the first queen that hatches. That's usually how it goes. The first queen that comes out goes and hunts down all the other ones. And so this will protect that queen. And you can use these over and over, which is pretty cool. And you're not supposed to use, no, I guess everybody's saying that, but I want to like to try that out. You're not supposed to use the little cups that you've uh, used and the bees didn't accept those. You're not supposed to reuse them, but I don't see why not. And I'd like to try it out. So they said the, so far, I had a very, very low success rate with brand new. And if they, uh, you know, maybe they don't like the smell of the plastic or whatever, and they have to clean it up a little bit first. But uh, I want to try using those used ones and see how that works. But for now, I got the bees set up for a different idea. I like to make bee splits using the, so I cut, what's called the Bogenschnitt in German. So I cut like triangles into the brood hoping that I got close enough to one of the freshly laid eggs that I didn't cut it. And it's right on the corner of the cut. So then the bees will recognize that as a really cool spot to make a queen cell. And there'll be like icicles hanging down. And that's what I want. If I have a whole bunch of those, then I'll wait till they're all capped off. And then I'll take a X-Acto knife. And I have to be real gentle. 
and then I'll take it out and I'll fix it in one of these things. I'll fix it up in one of these and hang those in there. And then hopefully I can hatch like 12, 13 queens out of one colony. That was my goal with doing this the traditional way. Yeah, but I'm not too good at that. <clears throat> and I'm really tired today. I'd probably fall asleep like face first, right into the honey, right onto the to the frame. I hear something out there. The antler spear tip isn't going to work because the center antler spear tip. Hmm? Antler spear tip? Did I miss something? Yeah, that's one way of uh, Luke and Mum how to make your own queens. There's a couple of ways to do that. It's called uh, grafting your um, grafting a queen, and there's there's different uh, mess there's different tools and equipment you can use for that. What I was looking into, I really want to go all out. Like you guys know me, if I if I'm gonna do something, I go I go the full way. I get all the professional equipment, and uh, it's worth my time. So if I get really good at this. Professional beekeepers, they change out the queen. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm so tired. They have professional beekeepers. They change out the queen every year to guarantee that before the winter, they have a fresh, healthy queen uh, to take that colony through the winter. And as soon as the winter is over, kickstart that colony off at full speed. And that's how they, that's how be professional beekeepers keep their investment under a tight uh, observation so they can make sure that they always have 100% optimal honey production. Now, I'm not after the honey, so uh, that's the other thing, you know, so I'm really, it'd be cool maybe to have some honey this year, which it looks like possibly that'll be a thing, but it's not like I'm doing this to chase the honey. If I was doing that, I'd have to put the bees all on a trailer I have to trailer them around to all the individual uh, areas where there's a, a concentration of, of one type of plant. Yeah, that's one of the other things too. Is I always have spare queens in case, like I earlier, I was looking for the queen out of one of my favorite colonies. I could not find her. I'm like, oh, what did I do? Where is it? Where is she at? Couldn't find her. I, I checked twice up and down. I'm hoping I didn't do something stupid like accidentally somehow transfer her into the into the uh, B split, which would be no problem because then I'll have like a I'll have a huge colony that now will make their own queen within a short period of time off of the, the eggs and the first larva. But I really was trying to go after making a queen from scratch, which is it gives you that slight advantage of, of having a better queen. It's, uh, so I learned that grafting your own queens gives you a higher quality of queen, which in turn gives you calmer bees and more honey production if you choose from one of those kind of traits as uh, to to graft from and this colony here i call we call those this uh, propolichen for propolis because they glue absolutely everything shut i mean it's like it's for harvesting propolis that colony is absolutely awesome so we want two or three more colonies of that for exactly that reason and they're very very good with honey too they're putting a lot of honey away so that's a really good thing what i'm not liking about them is that they're putting the honey down in the brew chamber i have to figure out how i'm going to trick them to go and put it up in the in the honey yeah so it's yeah making a bee split that's all fine and dandy that's usually you know works but uh the best way to do is to craft your own queen you know that colony has a good queen and that's what you want to uh, breed your other colonies off of. So you go in and you find a fresh born little larva. They're microscopic, they're tiny, tiny. 
and they're really hard to see. That's why I have my floodlight on, and I have and this weird-looking Star Trek space glasses here. And you still can't really – those you really can't see them with the magnifying glass. You have to, like, get up in there. And then there's no room to get the tool in there. And you have to ever so slightly just pick that little larva up and then put it back down in one of these little cups without <clears throat> without uh, damaging it or hurting it. And uh, that's, like, really tough because you have no feeling of what you're doing. You're, like, a billion times larger than the larva, and you have no feeling. Uh, there's a little tiny – like. Imagine a grain of rice cut in four. Yeah, that's about as that's about the size. Oh, I am very tired. I think I'm gonna probably do another five minutes here and I'm probably gonna head home. Oh, Nick, welcome. Yeah, I think go into nature. That's a good thing. I I've done that earlier just was up with uh Pooh Bear. We took a stroll through the forest. Go um, sweep up some ticks. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we got everybody logged in here. Good, good. Yeah, Nick, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, aliens in space. That was pretty cool. It's one of my favorite topics. Uh, the Chinese received a signal from outer space, I guess, and then they deleted all the, the information off the internet. Ah, Chris Travelstead blacksmithing. I did not see you... Join the chat. Welcome. Thank you for the compliment. My shop is coming along well. Yes, it has uh, been a journey. One of the things I'd like to do is run an I-beam across the roof so that I can put my cable pulley hoists there so that I can lift my anvil up and put it in the trailer if I ever choose to do that again. I won't need the forklift. I don't think that the bobcat will no longer fit through the door. I put a beam in the ground, and there's the, the the end stop now for the double doors is now, I think that's the limit. So what I'm going to do is is run an I-beam that I'll be able to slide all the way from one end of the shop to the other, a uh, chain pulley hoist. That'll be, and it's five, I got two 500 kilo hoists for like 70 euros. That was a steal off of the eBay classifieds. The guy's like, I have two. I'm like, I just want one. He's like, well, you're getting two. I'm like, okay, I'll take two. <laughs> so I'll see that. I just want to get rid of them. I'm like, cool. They work? He's like, yeah, yeah they work. He just has them laying around. and Yeah, so I'm going to get really excited to hang those up. Just fine-tune the rain gutter a little bit earlier today. That seems to be working well now. Uh, Hopefully I got something to eat in the refrigerator. I wonder if uh Yeah, so Vanessa, she went to go and take care of her little log cabin for a couple days. She just got home, so she's now gonna be there for the next five days or so. And I'll have to go forge for my own dinner. <laughs> Like I've been doing for the last, what now, uh, six weeks. Information on the internet is never gone. It will be somewhere. Yeah, it will be. Someone downloaded it. I'm sure the minute they saw that, they downloaded it. But I don't think the whole scoop is, uh, I don't know. I didn't get to, I didn't get time to sit down and actually wrap my head around that topic. I was, I just kind of briefly was clicking around on the on the front page of, of YouTube in the in the early morning. And then I'm like, what's that? And that's pretty cool. And then I you know and then I went on. Lee Redpath, welcome. You would love a beehive. Well, it's definitely something you'd want to get into. Uh, my recommendation before you buy your beehive, I would do some reading and definitely 
go visit a beekeeper, <clears throat> excuse me, and go see if it's something for you and have him explain, you know, everything he does. It's a lot of work. It's extremely time consuming. And it's not just like go get the bees and set them in the backyard. That's not going to work. They're animals that need an intense amount of care. And there's a lot of knowledge you need to have to basic knowledge and some basic tools and equipment before you even get really into it. So that's a really interesting, but yet very labor, very labor intensive hobby. That's just like having other animals. If you have like 15 chickens, you know, I just, that's nice that running around there, you know, leave them alone. No, they all need care. You know, I need to feed them, make sure they're you know doing what they're supposed to do. And none of them have any disease or sickness or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's bees. You got 60,000, 50, 60,000 of them swarming around in a, you know, in a box. So you need to make sure you can kind of, by taking a frame and seeing what's going on on the frame, you can kind of tell what, how the bees are doing and, and what it is they're up to and what they need. But having, yeah, bees is a good, it's a cool thing. Now, our honeybees here in Germany are only one of 550 species of bees that are all in need of help. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Oh, bees, you have honeybees. That's good. Yes, it's uh, good, but the bees we need to help are the ones that are living in little sand. And they, they make these little caves in the sand. They use old, uh, they use the old mice dens. They use old insects. They use like all the vacant cavities in the earth that they can find, especially bumblebees. They do that a lot too. That's funny. The bees are, that's fun. That's awesome. Yeah. My friend, I have a friend, uh, we call him the beer zerker because he's always, he's like drinks like 12 liters of beer and then he'll like pass out on the floor, <laughs> like in the middle of right outside in the rain on the floor. And he's like, leave me, I'll sleep right here. I'm like, no, you're going to come inside. I'm late. If you want to sleep on the floor, that's fine. Just, you know, under the roof. He's a silly guy. He comes on the chat once in a while too. Yeah, the bumblebees are pretty good. They love cat catnip. So cat mint, that's the that's the number one runner up right now here. There's I have a little corner when I drive up to the right of the gardening area. It's it's always full of bumblebees. There's always at least ten bumblebees in there. And when I'm working down there, all you hear them in there. Bee, 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 bee. It's so funny to watch them. And there's different species. I got the little tiny ones, the big fluffy ones with the yellow stripes, and so it's really cool. I think it's trying to rain again. I hear something. Hmm. Yeah, I think Nick, something, there's something to that. There's a space aliens was definitely something our ancestors would talk about, especially for the fact that I think a lot of our ancient ancestors were influenced by aliens or were actually genetically involved somehow with with different uh linear bloodlines of our past yeah giants did exist now that's uh it's not it's no big mystery that there were once on this earth giants that lived and so that's really interesting i oh, have some bumblebees that's pretty cool yeah they don't harm they're not they're not harmful in any way if you leave them alone, you'll probably just once in a while see one of them just come flying out. They get nosy sometimes, and they'll come up and check you out what's going on, and then they'll, you know, and then they just fly off. And they, they have no interest in being aggressive usually at all. Yeah, raspberries is a really good bee plant. It really is. I have quite a few. I bought all the plants that the store had on sale, they were sale 50% off or more or something like that the other day. And I bought all the berries, all of them. I was like three dozen. It was 33 plants that I planted that same day. And I still had, I got something in my eye. I planted 33 plants that day. I planted them all mostly along the, the hedgerow that I'm trying to make grow into like a green Hedro, <laughs> so I can go up there and actually eat the berries off of it one day. Oh, 
Oh well, yeah, modern aliens. I think there might be a possibility that a lot that's uh, being withheld from us is influenced by what we know from outer terrestrial sources and that there may be some kind of alien species somewhere influencing the tar the turn of the tides of this world but i would rather not believe that at this very moment because that would be weird there's a lot of, a lot of evil people already in this planet Yeah, it's um, really easy to do that. So you just look and uh, find where the plants are, and then they grow from the roots. They make new plants. But, uh, yeah, if you can go find, like, an area where you can just dig a ditch and start, like, making a perimeter around where you could imagine there's a perimeter and start planting those, you'll see that uh, in three or four years, you'll have a really nice hedgerow full of rat, and you can eat them. It's just like planting edible fence it's pretty cool and the birds love it and the bees of course it's a uh, extra bonus for them as well it sounds like someone's driving down there in the forest some of my plants that i my corn is finally starting to sprout. It's so exciting. The the, the first uh, first round that I did, I got one plant. <laughs> like three, I like 50, I think 50 or more. Only one, one corn plant. So I was like, oh, that's a great uh, attempt. So I threw the whole rest of the package in there. And now I have a whole bunch of corn plants. I'm really excited to see what's going to what that's going to turn out to. I ordered some more yellow clover, Gelba Steinkli. That stuff is the bomb. They love, the bees love that stuff, and it blooms for several months, and it grows over two meters tall, and it's absolute awesome. Oh, yeah, thorns, yeah. And you got to watch blackberries. Once you get them in somewhere, they, they spread in all kinds of directions. If they're hanging down on the ground, they'll grow into the ground and root again and sprout. It's just terrible. So you really you have to get them under control if you plant them. They, they really spread uh, quite quickly, and, un, and they like to go out of control. So blackberries are, you know, they grow really fast. Giant frogs, cool. That's really awesome. We have little tiny ones here. And actually, just as the other day, driving down, I almost crashed the van into the ditch because I didn't want to hit the frog. <laughs> I was like, oh, my. I almost wrecked my van because of the frog. Luckily, I did not hit the frog, and I did not wreck the van, so we're all good. But the, the frog was quite frightened. It, it was jumped back the other direction, which was smart. So, and that, I got out and had a good look at him. He's, it was perfectly fine. Hmm. Yeah, well, so hmm, I think I'm going to probably head out now. I'm going to go home and get some dinner and probably call it a day. I just wanted to stop by to say hello, see who wants to stop by and have a quick chat, maybe about this or that or the other. Yeah, you could plant them wildly somewhere. That's that's one thing. And just go back when you want to harvest the, the fruits. Just keep in mind, anything you plant, you, um, you have the, the fox will come by and pee on it. Um, anything, you don't want to pick wild berries, probably waste and down. down. That's probably a good uh, rule of thumb because you can get a really destructive worm disease from the, from the fox and die from that, actually. So you want to be real careful. That you don't eat off the lower berry, uh, off the lower layer. So that's why if you do have berries, you want to grow them tall first, and then you want to grow them out. There's different ways you can do that. 
But uh, I really have to go now. I'm getting really tired. I'm almost going to fall off this bench here, and that would be bad. So I'm um, going to thank everybody here for tuning in today. It was a nice little chat we had here, a little 40 minutes, almost done. almost an hour. We, and the battery is already starting to cry because it wasn't full when I I had the laptop on at work today for a little bit, so I lost a little bit of battery life, but that'll be charged back up when I get home. Yeah, it's a it's a tapeworm in it. And it's very common in foxes and Yeah, make sure you have uh you know, at least wash the berries you take home too as well. Just a quick wash. So, that's it everybody. I'm going to end the stream. Got to get going. Got to get some dinner. I have to feed Pooh Bear. He's pretty hungry as well. Thank you for tuning in everybody. It was an awesome little chat. Like always, stay safe and see you soon.